Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio and Spotify, all podcast catchers, YouTube as well. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian, and as always, uh, my co-host, everybody's favorite horror writer, Nicole Six. Good evening. Hi there, Nicole. I'm, Hi there, Mark. I'm Hi, Mark. Nicole. <laughs> See, uh, yeah, you better stop that, or else you're gonna get punished. <laughs> You talk when I tell you to talk. I'm kidding. Yeah, we have a guest here. <laughs> we have a guest here. And Nicole, I told you yes. the story. How unbelievable is this story? It's pretty wild. <laughs> People keep asking me what this show is about. And it is the lighter side of the dark side. But basically, in a nutshell, is I we try to interview interesting and unusual people. Right, Nicole? Yes. We've got somebody very interesting. It's so much fun story. that I fall into that category now. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yes, I'm an interesting and unusual person. Welcome to the club. <laughs> she has written a book. And this book, I got to tell you, makes Fifty Shades of Grey look like Dr. Seuss. It, <laughs> on an emotional level, on a, on a, on a uh, writing level, and also on a sexual level. And I it's called Surviving Master Joshua, the BDSM Memoir of an Unfaithful Life. Here she is. Karma said, "The unfaithful wife in the flesh." There's so much to this story, and I can't wait to unpack it. And I really need to be alert when I'm talking to you because there's so many things I need to remember. So this is why I'm drinking this. Yay. If I can get it in camera, that's I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to try putting it in camera. I'm going to put the uh, picture of it in post. But this it's is there. It's in camera. this is here. It is Ray's energy drink. This is the best energy drink. I've tried them all. This is the best. And this oh is my god! Ju- You're big enough to have commercials. I made it to the. Big oh, there's, 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 there's two more commercials to come, but this one is the best. Uh, wow. I don't know if you drink energy drinks, Karma, but I do, and uh, this is the best. And, and Nicole tried this. This is the new juice box flavor. It was delicious. I'll give it a try. It's delicious. The best part of Ray's energy drink: zero calories, zero carbs, zero crash. I'm gonna. I don't believe the zero crash, really. Really, no. Trust me. I have me, no I... crash from it. I mean, I also had mixed it with vodka. So if you were going to crash, that'd be the time to do it. If right. There was no crash. <laughs> it mixes very well with vodka, and I'm telling you, it, it you don't crash. You just stay alert all the time. Yeah. And fact, matter of fact, speaking of that, Nicole and I were talking a mile a minute after the show, and we were just full of energy right after we had that energy drink and <laughs> our and hanging out with our guests last week. So if you go to the description. On the podcast catcher or on YouTube, you'll get 15% off a case of Ray's Energy Drink, mm. any flavor you like. So All right, speaking, you, you got one customer. That, and one <laughs> customer you already got. Here's the story. Now, Karma said is not your real name. I know how you got the name. And we're going to get to that mm-hmm. later in the story. <laughs> but you were a reporter. And I want to do this as linear yeah. as I can. But uh, yep. I know there's going to be, we're going to be going back and forth. You were a reporter. Who now, that? for a conservative publication, we cannot name, but right. when you say conservative, is this like a right wing news, uh, like a, you know, a, a right wing magazine or a right wing newspaper or a blog or what, what uh, no. type of publication was this? It is a center right, um, religiously conservative ethnic publication. I see. Okay. okay. I'm getting I'm getting the picture. So and the, the, and so it was very religious and not very, not very. Just okay, but it was a it was it was a uh, valued. It, was a, it had a, like family values. It was a faith based <laughs> sort of uh, news outlet. And what type of stories did you cover before this? Uh, I can't get too deep into my work because that I mean, is just, the just, one just, thing that people can intersect with. So right. I can't go too deep into my work, but right. it is um, I specialized in lifestyle stories. So okay. this the evolvement into a different lifestyle is kind of like on my beat. Uh, okay, okay. I had All a right. I always had like my stories had a certain outsider aspect to them. Like I liked making I liked. Gonzo reporter, you know? Right. Like yeah. Right. Just thinking weird of just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were kind of the Hunter S. Thompson for the faith based exactly. conservative crowd. Exactly. So I was like their, their, uh, Got it. 
they're token weirdo. They're token uh, liberal weirdo in the paper. Oh, okay. Me and Mark are used to that. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I, I, we are. We are not. In, in some in some circles that we go through, we're the normal people. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't mean, know we, any like that for me. <laughs> well, uh, you, well, you got to hang out with us, and trust me, we know all, all the clubs. I, uh, yeah. matter of fact, I was listening to a podcast. You were talking about going to DomCon, and we know Mr. Cyan and Sanctuary oh. here in LA is just about to they open had- up. I mm-hmm. will I will tell Cyan you said hi. Now th- but had you done anything this sexual or this never uh out, Before out that, there? N- right. Never. It was completely by accident. I never meant to do anything sexual. Were you assigned or were you I mean were you assigned well, uh, hey, I was... hey token weirdo at the conservative <laughs> convocation, uh we got a story <laughs> about uh, an S and M. And let me tell you what the story is, Nicole, because we're both journalists. Go. Cool. This yes. is Master Joshua, who is in the New York scene, a very big, uh, you know, a very uh, he's he's a very established dom in the New York scene, and he was being me too. He was accused of what was he accused of specifically? Well, um, a I didn't start out searching for that story. I went. Oh, really? In, okay. Yes, I went in. Uh, that's step two. So I went in looking for uh, religious figures in the kick scene, and ah, a that's interesting. Yes, a co-worker in this publication referred me to Master Joshua's then partner, mm. um, who organized kink parties for a variety of people and had a lot of connections. And she said, yeah, I got a lot of, uh, I got everything for you. I got priests, I got uh, I got Hasids and kennels, I got peaks uh, wow. in a, in a <laughs> drinking kosher wine and getting bottles stuffed up their butt. Uh, right. I got everything you might want, um, and um, it's always nice to have a connection that knows where they stick Manischewitz up people's asses. So that's good. <laughs> and we have a couple connections around here too. So it was, it was, it, you you were getting Christians, you were getting Jews, Muslims. I'm assuming, possibly. We talked about it on a phone conversation. It was a joking yeah. conversation. She was just saying, like, yeah, I could get you anything. Right. And I, but and how many so, people, how many religious figures did you did you come across in the scene? Like, like as far as plenty. As, but that story dropped. Uh, I'm yeah. getting this. That was step one. Like I said, mm-hmm. um, it began there, and I began right. doing the research there. But as I did the research, um, accusations of uh, sexual harassment and uh, misconduct uh, against Master Joshua surfaced. Now, uh, her, his partner was the person who brought me in. But Master mm-hmm. Joshua was quickly became the the speaker because he's just that kind of guy, um, and he was the one guiding me. So once I realized that there are uh, accusations against them, of course the story changed. Mm-hmm. Right? I was like, um, I can't run with a story where you're featured heavily, mm-hmm. and um, and you are my main source while there are public accusations hanging above your head but the person who re- who pointed these accusations up to me they were just a set of posts uh on um on fet life which were right. reposted in uh facebook and which kind of created their own you know little shitstorm. um right. but there were just posts um mm-hmm. by a former play partner of his mm-hmm. um so the person who referred me referred me to it said, you know, there's a better story for you here to than religious people in the kink scene. You could explore what Me Too, what the Me Too movement did to the kink scene, how it's playing out in the kink mm-hmm. scene. Mm-hmm. Um, because the kink scene being um, completely in a different set of ethics and behaviors than uh, the vanilla world Absolutely. had to had to kind of reform its own rules to the Me Too movement, right? You can't. That's what I was wondering. I, I mean, how, what is appropriate now for a Dom and what is not? Right, exactly. That's exactly what the crux of the story was. It was sort of like, that's why the story interested me. I wasn't so much after Joshua as in, but more trying to understand as an outsider, it's hard to understand even as an insider, but as an outsider trying to understand, well, how can you tell what's appropriate or not in a place where everybody seems to be acting inappropriately as a sort of base level? I mean, right. there, of course, once you're in, you you understand there are rules, there's etiquettes, mm-hmm. there, there's mm-hmm. 
there's lots well, but there's also there's there. also pushing of boundaries right that's inherent in the whole thing exactly so how and do you so, un- how do you deal with it in in such a charged environment right. that was my the second story i was stepping in and master joshua was indeed the centerpiece of it because mm-hmm. he had such a fascinating he was in a fascinating situation where mm-hmm. um according to him he was just being doing what people do in the BDSM scene. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, how can you tell when it's uh, rape play or rape? (laughs) Well, 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 in my case, that's when I say, ouch, but uh, I don't know uh, in that, in that context, but now you were actually, when, if I'm, if I have this correct and correct me if I'm wrong, if I don't, you actually became intrigued in the S and M scene after you read 50 shades of gray. Um, <laughs> or were you intrigued okay, before so, then? I was always intrigued, but Fifty mm-hmm. Shades kind of brought up. First, let me save my reputation here by saying uh, I did not find Fifty Shades of uh, Grey to be either good literature or good S and M. Well, now that you know the real, I mean, you know that it's uh, yeah. it, it's Twilight fan fiction. It was somebody that wrote Twilight fan fiction, and yeah. Twilight is written back. <laughs> well, well, but. <laughs> But you know that's how that that's how that book started. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I get it. And, and you know, and everybody's got to start somewhere. I mean, I don't have any, I don't have any uh, judgment on people that started with Fifty Shades of Grey. There's a lot of people that did. I feel bad because I mean, I have certain amount of judgment because just because the holy cow, I really got upset at the holy cow. It's inappropriate. Whatever, whatever you do and whatever your kink is, saying "holy cow" when a dick comes comes towards you is just wrong. <laughs> I feel <laughs> it's just you know what what the why is she saying "holy cow"? Is she sick? <laughs> well, I, maybe it's an udder, not a dick. I don't know. Maybe that's why she's saying "holy cow." I have no idea. I know I say "holy cow" every time a dick comes towards my mouth. Well, wait, so did I say that a lot? I'm sorry. But what what, what I'm saying is everybody's got to start somewhere. So. So, so but and when you got into the scene, you saw that the what it's really like now. True that Nicole and I, we are sort of on the outskirts of the scene. We're not lifestylers, mm-hmm. but we've been in fetish clubs. We have a lot of friends that are that are in the fetish community. And I like the fetish community. I, I mean, I know I've had sex with dominating partners, and I've also had sex with submissive partners. So I know what it's like. I just it's very. <laughs> I, I have my riding was... crop at the ready just in case. <laughs> but and, I mean. And it's, uh, it's different depending on what people are into. I find that I prefer to be submissive than dominating, but I also enjoy like, I mean, I don't mind smacking the guy on the ass or giving a good blow job or like taking charge in the bedroom. I just, uh, when it came to whipping, I kind of didn't know how hard I got. I, I have a, I have a hard time putting too much into it because I don't want to put too much into it. I don't want to hurt the other person. So it kind of distracts me from the sex because in the back of my mind, I'm worried about hurting the other person. Yeah, so let me just backtrack for a moment. For me, my entry, th- though it's a highly sexual scene, there was never any sex involved for me. Mm-hmm. And when it came to out the scene, you know, a group of people in a public area, it was... Uh, well, there's never any sex for that. It's not allowed. <laughs> or maybe it is in New York. It's not allowed here. <laughs> okay. Well, still, it's not. It isn't about. Uh, it wasn't about hitting people. The first party I went to, right? Mm-hmm. So I went to a party. Joshua opened the door for me. He was like, mm-hmm. um, he was like, you know, you're, if you're going to be writing on about this stuff, you should definitely see what it is first. Yes. Because I had no experience at all, no real life connection to the thing in any way. So he said, come meet the people, watch a play party, and interview them afterwards. Um, and uh, I came there, and the people spoke about their religions and their connection between kink and religion, how how their values and beliefs interact with their, with their kinks and their kinky lives and their kinky values and beliefs. And uh, then, and I got to see them a little bit as people, as humans. And then they went out of the door and came back in, you know, in gear and costume mm-hmm. and leather mm-hmm. on all mm-hmm. fours and collars and leashes mm-hmm. and, uh, and dog masks and like looking like a, a combination of a leather freak show. Like, you know, I was like, what the? 
you're the same people I, I met before. You're you're the CEOs and shit. Uh, well, uh, well, I'm I'm assuming that you had the same experience I had. Uh, you know, uh, meeting people in the scene is that they're some of the most intelligent people uh, that I've ever met. Eventually, but just that for me, it was the first time. Right. Connecting between normal people and and the scene and how right. it looked like the scene when it when it looked like it looked uh, it looked um, visceral. You know, no, it definitely then I is. watched, then I watched them play. And when I watched people play, particularly when I watched Joshua play, um, it was just so raw and elemental and alive. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, I was stunned. It spoke to me. So it spoke to me like, like a, it was like a waking up in a way, because I was like, ah, this is how people connect. I've never mm -hmm. seen it before, but this is how people in real time are exactly who they are with each other. Mm -hmm. And there's no masks and there's no ceremonies and there's no like, like, well, there, well, there, not, there, there, are. there is, and there <laughs> is, there is, yes. I mean, but, 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 but honestly, I mean, that's, uh, you know, everybody has several masks that they, that they wear. People have true. masks with their friends. People have masks with their lovers. People have masks with their families. I mean, everybody's a few different people all at once. Right. True, and people have masks in the scene too. But absolutely, people have literal masks in the from scene. Me, yes, <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking as <laughs> one. Yes, but coming in there and seeing how like they, they just drop everything, all the all the hi, nice to meet you. I'm such and such. Here's my card. You know, it's just a raw exchange. That's how it looked like to me, mm -hmm. coming in for the first time, mm -hmm. and it really spoke to me. Right. I was like, I was like, these are my people. <laughs> I don't know yeah. where I was until today, but these are my people. <laughs> I had I had a similar experience. Yeah, I had a similar experience. Uh, just uh, finding fetish through the goth scene. Although I'm not somebody that plays in public, and I'm not really a lifestyler. But what I was, what I found odd, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to gather this from what what I've read and what I've uh, seen, mm -hmm. is that uh, you and Joshua had a sexual relationship before you had a master slave relationship is that right um yes yes because that's did. unusual that's unusual because as i say that you, there's a lot of snm activity a lot of it is i mean it's sexual and people are getting turned on but it's not sexual in that they're inserting anything into anything well that didn't happen in a club that happened our relationship evolved over it evolved through the journalist interviewee connection first right mm -hmm. um, we just met and talked mm -hmm. the let, connection let me, i'm trying to have with you right now <laughs> 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 luckily you're far away <laughs> uh, I'm that's what a lot now. of girls say <laughs> all right demon calm down <laughs> so you're you're bringing out my side this is this is yeah now i'm getting I can my see raw it. side like i just yeah. just Yes. Okay. I'll, 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 yeah. Let me whip myself. We're Go on ahead. air. We're on air. Yeah. I'm whipping. I'm whipping myself. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know who's Nicole to you. We're on air. There's another woman here. Please respect. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, where were we? It took. Uh, the, how the sexual relationship developed. Joshua and I knew, it, knew each other for a, a year before that happened. Mm -hmm. A year in which we met often. So it wasn't um, like we just threw our clothes off in a club or something what did you like about him what what was the interest there oh, well first you gotta meet him he's, he's extremely charismatic and he's sexy and he's hot and i'm watching him the first time i watched the bdsm scene he was like in the middle of it like just doming <laughs> yeah looking like he was you know born for the role he's a rock star it comes off him in waves he's just like a pheromone machine you can't you know, watch him, meet him. You you won't have to ask. It's sort of like, uh, it's kind of like, how do you not fall in love with that? It's <laughs> like, if you're like this timid little wallflower walking into a scene for the first time and he puts his eyes on you, it's just like, you know, it's just like uh, this hundred uh, thousand watt glare just, and you're in it. It's a magnet. You wouldn't know. It's, it's, what is it? Oh, Nicole would know. She's 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 met charismatic men. 
Yeah, that, that that's, scene that's, in uh, that's just myself, but no, no, in a high school movie. <laughs> you know, it's that scene in uh, I don't know that that high school movie. What is that? Pretty in Pink or something? <laughs> right. But but let me ask you: uh, Was he the first guy you saw doing a scene? He was among. I mean, that night was the first time I saw live scenes. Right. But did he you was, have? Do you have any other attraction to other men doing uh, scenes? Listen, I, I went, I walked in, I watched, I watched a bunch of people uh, scene, mm -hmm. right? And he was among them and he was the organizer and he was the person I was interviewing, right? right? So he was the only one I had contact with later on, simply by, right. by circumstances. Because I think what, well, I think what Nicole's getting at is what separated him from the other doms yes. for you? I never met other doms. <laughs> I, I mean, didn't, never, okay. I still haven't. So you know, so you never actually had, uh, you know, had interaction had with no other doms with away from the scene. Then that, I get that. Okay. Like I had, he he was my kind of guide, kind of from the moment I put my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. he, I was he was my source and my interviewee, but very soon I began asking questions that were offbeat because I was so attracted to it. And he was the guy who opened the door to me. He mm -hmm. was like, and he just fell instantly into the role. He just became a mentor very quickly. It's mm -hmm. sort of like, uh, you know, I was, I remember those first days, it was weird. I was so confused. I didn't understand what was happening to me. It was mm -hmm. like, uh, like, it was like I became a vampire or something. You know, I mm -hmm. couldn't sleep. I was walking around. I was thinking nonstop about it. I was like thinking about all my past experiences and and thinking maybe this means, you know, just kind of like something turned over in my head. And I was like, who am I? <laughs> What's right. happening to me? And, 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 and I'm not saying that he did, but you can see to uh, somebody who's not familiar with the situation and not seeing this in real time, mm -hmm. how some people could think he might have taken advantage of you. How so? I mean, wait, uh, 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 like, well, I get it. I get it. I'm not, I'm you know not what I'm saying? I'm not saying that he did, but I'm saying you could see to the untrained eye. If they looked at it, they're like, wait a second. He's the, your source for this, for this whole world that you have nothing to do with. And he's kind of being a guru to you. And, right. and he had other, other lovers and other play partners. True that. Cause in the book, you say, yeah, you, so. you finally said that you were in love with him. And he's like, I love you too. Like I love all my partners. <laughs> Wow, I have an interview with somebody who actually read the book. That's dangerous. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I get you. Yes, and, and, and has and has a writing crop. But go ahead. It, it goes. It goes along the right. You know, like I said, you're on video. Uh, you cannot use that thing on your camera without harming your camera. Um, you want to bet? No, go ahead. No, but what, what I was going to say is, um, I mean, that's got to be devastating because you worked off and, and you're and, and all the while, and we haven't even touched on this. You're a married woman with two young kids. Yep. And you muster up the courage to finally, and as I said, this evolved mm -hmm. over a year's time to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. And which is the most vulnerable thing you can say to a person. And you were reciprocated in a way and in a way you were not. Because he did say he loved you, but he said he loved you not in the way I that you all loved my him. Yes, right. I love all my play partners. Well, I'm sorry, Master Joshua. Karma got you for that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's on air now. Um, yes, he was. Uh, that was. To be fair, there's a lot there that was happening between us that didn't make it to the book. So that actually did happen. But there mm -hmm. was always this pull, right, where he was sort of like, listen, listen, kiddo, I am Polly. <laughs> You are not my first priority at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be madly in love, uh, but I do this uh, with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Poly and pansexual. Yeah. So I do this. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, while he was not, I think, trying to be offensive with that piece of information, I think he was trying to keep it front and center that there is not going to be any kind of... Uh, of uh fairy tale uh i'm not gonna you know throw him on the back of my white horse and gallop away with him right <laughs> and that took uh you know that took uh, that was a hard and long lesson to learn that the mm -hmm. ideals of love that you come with growing up in a completely you know vanilla vanilla monogamous setting and living 
most of your life in a vanilla mon- monogamous setting and then falling in love with somebody who lives through poly mm-hmm. uh, is a hard lesson because you have to learn it's not um, about you or about him. It's about relationships. <laughs> it's about connecting to multiple people. And I can never commit to someone who is poly. I could have like a casual relationship with them, but I, in an actual relationship, I need more security than I would be able to be provided. I would, my jealousy just wouldn't allow it. Like when I'm casually dating someone, they can see whoever they want to see. That doesn't bother me. We're not like relying on each other for emotional love. Uh, a, um, an emotional relationship. It's more of a physical thing. But when you get that emotional relationship where you like are in a place where your heart relies on their heart, I think that Polly is a little too difficult for me personally. It was very difficult. And it is at times very difficult. But the thing you learn from it is, is I mean, it makes you, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger kind of thing because mm-hmm. it makes you very self-reliant in a way it teaches you to refocus your being and who you are and what experience you are having right now because what is jealousy jealousy is putting your attention on something you are lacking yeah sort of like somebody else has this and i do not have it because jealousy is also insecurity uh, and with a poly relationship if you are not ready for it you will find yourself very insecure throughout that I suffered a lot from it, but but I like 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 the books say I survived. <laughs> you did. Well, uh, and I will tell you what what also doesn't kill you but makes you stronger mm-hmm. is Renegade CBD. <laughs> if you go to renegadecbd.com for all your CBD needs, Ooh, the website is up now, and you can get gummies, you can get uh, cigarettes, you can get all sorts of things infused with CBD, uh, chocolate. Uh, Nicole's tried it. She can vouch for it. I have tried all of it. It's delicious. Everything that's edible is tasty as hell. They have bath bombs. They have everything. So go to Renegade. The bath bomb was luxurious. Have some CBD. It'll relax you. It'll chill you out. If you're insecure, it'll do wonders. So go to (laughs) RenegadeCBD.com. Now, here's the thing. That was awesome, man. That was awesome. That was the smoothest (laughs) plugging I ever saw. The thing about the video seven is it turns people on. I've had people come over to my house and we start playing and it ends up in sex. And then afterwards they're like, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> no, no. Afterwards they're like, I didn't plan on having sex tonight, but they were just that turned on. That's yeah. happened a few times. And Maybe it's uh, just you. Well, okay. <laughs> what can I say? But you did get the name Carmen in a very unusual way. Tell everybody how that happened. Well, um, the name Karma was de- derived from when Master Joshua uh, invited me to interview him and it went to the whole Me Too sexual abuse allegation stuff, uh, he asked me after I started digging and got uh, started laying out the material and all, he said, you know what, me and my partner, we've been through a lot and I feel like another delve in this whole sexual abuse allegation things it's just gonna it's just gonna kill us can you please not publish this and i said you know what um you brought me in you opened the door to me i don't want to harm you in return so i'll drop it but tell me why would you invite a reporter into your life when you got this cloud of shit hanging over your head and such a public and such public view and he was like i trust karma to protect me and I was like, it is not karma protecting you, you know. It's me. <laughs> I'm protecting you. <laughs> so when it came time to choose the pseudonym, I was like, you know what? Karma said that. My name will be Karma Said. <laughs> the the moment that it turned sexual and you're a married woman, I mean, what was going through your mind when you finally uh, committed to it? I'm assuming you kissed a little bit and you did other things and you played, but uh, when it finally came to sex uh what was going through your mind well we i was pretty careful if you you read the book you saw it happened Mm -hmm. as a very slow slippery slope right uh with a kind of like two or three weeks intervals between meeting and each meeting kind of like pushes the boundary and almost like high school levels uh you know virgin high school levels thing Mm -hmm. like you know was the bases kind of like, no, we can't do this. No, we can't do that. No, we can't do it. And every time we do a little bit more, uh, 
against our own best uh, <laughs> best intentions. Um, against your best comes, intentions, I have a feeling he had every intention. I think he did it from what I'm reading, according to plan. In some respects, I think. He, and once again, I'm not blaming him. I trust me. I, you know, you're a beautiful woman. Why not? Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't think he does anything by accident. I don't know him. I'm not interviewing him. <laughs> and we're going to get to why I'm not interviewing him later. But I think he knows exactly what he's doing every step of the way. He's a very intelligent man, and he's uh, he seems to know exactly what he's doing. Well, I don't think it was. Uh... I'll give you his line. How about that? Here's what, he, here's what he would say about it in past interviews. My mistake was that I circumvented morals with ethics. Mm-hmm. Ethically, I had her permission. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need her husband's permission. Mm-hmm. She needs her husband's permission. I've heard I need that. her permission. Mm-hmm. Morally, it was a mistake. Morally, mm-hmm. I should have had everybody aboard. Right. And because I didn't, uh, we all had to go through a long and difficult transition. But that transition ultimately made us into better people. Exactly. And what's 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 interesting to me is that in order for you to be collared by him, and uh, for people that don't know, we know, is uh, you officially become a slave, you had to... Uh, confess to your husband what was happening exactly yeah and i think in that move whatever his motives were before and whatever his um strategy was before i believe in that move move in a way we both redeemed ourselves Mm -hmm. it was the hardest thing either of us has to do because uh i'm pretty sure he did not want the responsibility for wrecking my family and Mm -hmm. you know i'm pretty sure he did not want the responsibility for a slave living on the you know i am i live my husband is my main provider he did Mm -hmm. not want that responsibility of either wrecking my family or you know having to care for me if i find myself Mm -hmm. on the street Mm -hmm. right but we both took that risk of of getting to a place where i can tell my husband the real truth about what happened and he walked me through it And he took the responsibility, even if that's a responsibility he should not have, you know, some, some of the Puritans may say you shouldn't have done that from to start with. Right. But we're all sinners here. Sure. But but this is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like you rehearsed with him what you were going to say to your husband. True. Yes, I did. So he's still manipulating that to an extent. You're not. You're, 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 he's, he's, he's helping you out as to what you say, but shouldn't that be a normal conversation or a natural conversation with you and your husband? That failed so many times <laughs> as yeah. in, I, I didn't, when we got to that point, that was when I asked for help. I begged for help because mm-hmm. I could not do it on my own. Right. Because there was, there is a, the reason the, the block there was a block in communication there that was very difficult and our, mm-hmm. also i was already in a very difficult position i mean imagine sure. telling your spouse that you cheated on them of right? course yeah it's a hard conversation to have and mm-hmm. i was not able to have it without what would have happened what would have happened relationship wise if he hadn't made you confess? Would you have just carried on or would you have left uh, your husband in the natural course of things? What do you think would happen? I was uh, playing pretty heavy close to suicide. Like I would, I would probably yeah. attempt suicide. Mm. I couldn't, I was in a, a gridlock. It was I a, would it was... not, I would not attempt suicide. I, I don't think I would have aimed to kill myself, but I think I would have aimed to take myself out of the game in a way. <laughs> like, is... like being hospitalized for being insane seemed much, a much the, the easiest solution at that point. Like, uh, like just being, um, uh, receiving sort of a blanket forgiveness because I'm just not okay. <laughs> well, let, let me ask, let me letting ask everything you. fall away, you know? Well, let me ask you another tough question, and I, that is part of the book, and that is, uh, you know, hard to, uh, you know, hard to read because uh, you were in, you were in a, 
even though you were uh, being sexually gratified and having a wonderful family life, which a lot of people would be like, you got your cake and eat it too. You were in a really dark place. But let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have kids, would you have left your husband? Good one. Uh, mean one. Hey, that's it's it. not a mean one. I'm just curious because <laughs> I've never heard you speak on that. I got to say, you're the hard, most hardcore uh, host I got so far. I thought I got this down, but you're killing me, man. Um, uh, you don't have to answer if you don't. Yeah, know. you don't have to answer anything we ask. Let's say, let's say probably not because mm -hmm. of the level of um he had multiple other partners right and he uh not husband material <laughs> yeah like not not even steady partner material so in a way right. i was like i am in a little bit sure there were points of the of our relationship where i would have done anything jumped off any cliff and probably would have left my husband, mm -hmm. but would have deeply regretted it about three weeks later. <laughs> sure, yeah. Because uh, the way the lifestyle and and uh, the way he chooses to live live his life, and you know what, I'm supporting him. I support him, but right. that now, way like, would not work for for a person who needs. Like, I need my husband. Yeah, and that's a now you and your husband that. have like a relationship that's working what was what was the best thing that came from having your husband back in your life like that steadiness well he was always in, he was always in your life right left. yeah i never left. yeah but i, I meant uh, you took when, when it was all in well, the clear, well, 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 well we're gonna get to that so uh okay. we're gonna sure. get to that so no no i because i want to say i because you wrote this book right and you were and basically what happened was and what happened? I mean, tell tell everybody what happened when, you know, you told your you told your husband. Um, did he did he suspect? He knew in a way. I right, mean, right. it was. Let me clear this and say, um, both Joshua and I were doing our best to be as upfront as we dared. And mm -hmm. then when I wanted to explore the BDSM scene, I told my husband, I want to explore the BDSM scene. When mm -hmm. I went to my first party, I told him I went to my first party. When I wanted to explore, I told him I want to explore. Mm -hmm. The whole the BDSM was not a secret. My involvement in in the sexual exploration was not a secret. However, the presence of Joshua was. Right. So and and at that point, you had tried to br bring some BDSM into the bedroom and it wasn't taking? Oh, uh, you know. It, with your husband? Yes. It, took it was taking with Master Joshua. We got that. <laughs> <laughs> we got that. <laughs> it was definitely taken there. Damn. Let me put my punching gloves on. Let me, let me put I'm my not, punching I'm gloves on. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, try, I'm, just, I'm just asking because I'm curious. It's just kind of sharp. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to read between the lines is what it, what it is. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me recalibrate. You're not a host. You're a sadist. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm tr I'm trying to turn you on. <laughs> I don't, it wasn't the sadism that pulled me in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like being I, a sadist. I tolerate, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious the about these things. Mm -hmm. I tolerate the sadism. That's all. <laughs> anyway. Well, what, what I was asking thing? was, what is the good stuff your husband brings to your life? Jeez. That's what I was trying to ask. He's my rock. I mean, when people read the book, um, the most the, the most touching and the most honest thing I usually get, everybody is excited about Joshua. And everybody's kind of thrilled about the road we took together. And everybody's into the sensation. But one of the things I get most is like, you know, the person I have the most respect for in this book is your husband. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine told me, you know, he played the long game. He saw what he's getting and he he put his emotions aside. He put his anger and jealousy and uh, and um, rightful outrage aside. Mm -hmm. And he put his values on top because his values, he, what he told me is sort of like, you know what, marriage is not a cage. And uh, 
I am not against exploration in principle. I'm against you having an affair and not telling me, but mm-hmm. I don't think you should be locked in. And so I'm going to put my money where my mouth is or my mouth where my money is, whichever one it is, and and let you do what you want to do. I'm not going to stand in your way. I just need you to be a good mother and a good wife. He genuinely so, loves you and he set you free. Uh, yeah. I mean, he still has have he still has a hard time saying I love you when he looks at me mm-hmm. sometimes. <laughs> but but I get that. But 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 you know. Yeah, I know. But and, that, and so that's, that's the dichotomy that's the dichotomy you were at because you were in love with two men at the same time. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, I really love I mean he's he's a he's a gem. <laughs> I mean he's how many people can do that? How many people and it, and there was like he played it like a like a like a chessboard, right? He was like, Okay, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna do this whole thing. But we're gonna be together and I'm gonna be here when she's back. <laughs> you know? It, it's not that guy left, but he just gave me enough leash or enough rope to to go explore without me having to no pun intended (laughs) but basically he if you love somebody set them free they come back they really love you if they don't come back you never have them to begin with you know what's funny i found myself doing the same thing with joshua right Mm -hmm. five years down the line right that's where i want to get to this is this is what i want to find out about (laughs) yeah so, I found myself doing that same math with Joshua, right? And that's pretty recent. Yeah. Now, what happened there? Yeah, you, you, you probably, like, you're the inside of, insider on the story. You probably, one of us needs to lay the background, right? Right. You, well, you need to speak out loud here. Well, you, 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 so you, started, you started switching and exploring your dom side. Yes, I, I don't identify as his slave anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm not slave. You see, there's no collar. Right. I don't wear a collar anymore. <laughs> right. Um, in fact, if you and this is ago, this is after this is after the book is published. Yes. And what was the reaction of of the book, both in the community and out of the community? I am careful with social media. I don't put myself out there too much. Mm-hmm. So, and my true identity is is uh, concealed. No, I understand that. But when you when you get so feedback, when get you get food. when you get some feedback or reviews, yeah. you know who knows what they're talking about, who doesn't. People yes. are like, "Oh my god, I've never seen anything like this." <laughs> people are like, "Yeah, I know all about that, and this is a great story." Right. I got a lot of. Uh, um, it was very validating because the reviews were a lot like um, very affirming, very understanding, but also like I, I found myself in this position. People told me I found myself in this position. I felt what you felt, mm-hmm. especially about the whole introduction to BDSM part. Mm-hmm. Some who, who had gone through the experience of 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 a tense transition with their partner or cheating or hiding or keeping secrets, people who went through that mm-hmm. really resonated with that. And people right. who, but mostly what I got was the about the transition into BDSM. They were like, oh, I felt that. I've mm-hmm. been through that. Also, I got really like heartwarming reviews or replies from people who are coming out of the closet mm-hmm. and who are going through sim- similar uh, processes. And, and a lot of vanilla people were like um, very, very supportive because they were like, they responded to, I mean, I put myself out there in that book in a way that, that makes me cringe all the time. Right? It's, it's, when you're it's, talking it's, about it, I'm like, why did I publish this it's again? It's so forthcoming. I mean, it, I, I, it's, it's amazing. It's a, you're, you're putting out really just a, an, a, in some respects an open wound. Yeah. And, <laughs> Literally. Uh, and, a, and, and a story of liberation. So it's, I mean, the best really, and the worst of, of you. Right, really, like embarrassing shit. I mean, embarrassing when people start asking me. When I meet people in person and they start asking me, let the book. Let me let me fill you in here. Who, the book has um, certain mental breakdown scenes, so mm-hmm. panic attacks, self-cutting, mm-hmm. stuff that 
I am super ashamed of. Right. I, I don't want to talk about it. It's like embarrassing, like how how in pieces and messed up I was, right? There's not, there's nothing to be, there's nothing I've been uh, hospitalized for trying to kill myself. And I also had a very bad breakdown and it was very public too. So I understand sometimes it's just what has to happen. Like it's not something you can control. It, it's just something you're going through and you just have to see it through. No, oh, thank you for saying that. And really, <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> you look so... Composed. Well, I put myself <laughs> back together again, and that takes time. I mean, and, this and was Car five years ago. So, and, and you did too, Karma. You yeah, put yourself back together true. again, and you look very composed. And uh, you know, as I said, there's there's a lot uh, there's a lot to the story. I mean, you don't have to be in the in the BDSM scene to really get in, be engaged in the story. It really is. It's a hardcore lifetime movie. <laughs> in the in the yeah. sense, it's about you finding. What really turns you on? And speaking of turning on people, we are now sponsored by Tactical Soap. <laughs> Tactical Soap. And you were saying that Master Joshua, uh, it feels like he was made out of, uh, you know, he had pheromones coming out, uh, out of his body. If you really want pheromones coming off your body, get Tactical Soap. This is soap made with pheromones. They have three uh, or nine mm -hmm. different uh, types, Bond, Durden, and Maverick. <laughs> one two and three and they've got soaps they've got colognes they have lotions go to tactical soap and once again there will be a link in the description you can get your tactical soap you need like you somebody can, holding up signs and stuff yeah and you could be somebody that just has that magnetism like master joshua <laughs> now <laughs> oh my god i need that bit recorded like i'll send magnetism like master joshua He's yes like, i will send i will send that to you you can send that to master joshua and uh you can ignore everything else i've said about him uh being a manipulator but um <laughs> anyway so here's 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 where the story gets uh gets crazy now as i said you the book's published right. people love it as i say this is one of the most interesting stories i've ever heard and you it know, just it, won an award by the way what, what uh, award did it win? It'd be the Independent Press uh, Awards. That's great. Yeah, it won the Ippy Award in the category of sexuality. Yeah. I'm just uh, doing a media blast to all the big papers and all that. That's wonderful. You were doing all this press and all these podcasts with Master Joshua, promoting the book. And was that where it fell apart with him? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Um. As long as I was uh, his slave, right, mm -hmm. and working with him on his goals, uh, my I was happy to do that because mm -hmm. uh, um, I wasn't. It was COVID. I wasn't working on anything right. else at the time. Uh, I my paper closed. I lost my job before that, and my paper mm -hmm. closed anyway during COVID. So I was working freelance. I didn't have anything better to do than to be his slave, and I was looking for my my path. Mm -hmm. I was working on the book. That's what I yes. was doing. Right. During the the global pandemic. Right. Which which hit the whole S and M scene hard. Right. I mean there was no S and M scene. I had my own private little polycule there, so I was grateful for that. <laughs> no, there, I mean people were doing Zoom stuff, but that's not the same. Right. Definitely not. Yeah. So because um, we've had a, a lot of Doms on the show talk about how tough it was during during uh, COVID. Uh, you know, they had to do OnlyFans, but they also did private sessions. Right. on zoom but it's not the same you don't it's not as visceral it's not anything like it yeah <laughs> but yes. uh, yeah i mean it's, I fun, mean, it's so. like uh, just like sex on zoom i mean great <laughs> yeah nice. well yeah yeah i mean you, you you can bust a nut but it's not uh it's not the same what i what i've noticed and i was telling the call this the other night mm -hmm. is people don't know how to communicate anymore there's people that were the best of friends before covid they were isolated after covid they don't know how to talk to each other we do not. We, COVID was great for me and my relationships. Really? <laughs> actually, well, yeah, because uh, um, you got to compartmentalize. I lost everybody who wasn't integral to my life, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of um, it was fascinating for me to see how I am without all the bullshit. It, the core people, the people who are important to me and are part of my life, stayed part of mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to part 
long with my and we became much tighter during that time and much more together and i loved mm -hmm. it it was like uh, i was isolated but i was isolated with with my own family and with my mm -hmm. kink family that was amazing right. that's great right. <laughs> so i and shut out the rest of the world yeah i mean it was it was actually so much easier <laughs> right mm -hmm. Then no, I understand. Having that's, to that's deal with all the people and the rules and the frameworks and the all the hoops you have to jump through, and that's and that's a that's a uh, uh, I mean a lot of people have been going through that, and that's why now that everybody's out and they're trying to communicate amongst each other, they're having a hard time. Whereas before, people did have a, a level of decorum or at least uh, try to be nice or actually knew how to communicate with people that is, are not in their scene. Now it's weird. It's just people. Just, I mean, there's political shifts, there's sexual shifts, there's all this other stuff, and everybody's just isolated. Hmm. I don't, I don't experience it that way. You don't think so? You think it's a different thing for you? Well, uh, it's not my current experience. I mean, it might be something that is moving through the media or something that. It, uh, uh, well, it's not the media. I, I, it's, it's, it's really. I mean, maybe it's an LA thing. Maybe New York's a whole different thing because we know how friendly people are in New York. But <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say. Famous now, for it. <laughs> yeah, now, uh, and I was born in Brooklyn. And by by the way, the, the time has flown by. And But I do have to ask you this. Now, yes. how did you get into Dami? Well, because you are, always... you are a sub, and you were really intrigued by the sub. How did you end up becoming a Dom? Uh, well, it, even in the book. Or even the switch. Even in the book, uh, there's uh, um, parts where I speak about, you know, the sadism. I am definitely, I definitely have a, a sadist in me. Mm -hmm. I definitely enjoy inflicting pain. And um, I hope you could tell by this interview that I have, uh, you know, uh, quite an amount of charisma myself and I can take. Oh, the, yes. Oh, yes. I can, I, I, I'm happy to take the lead. Mm -hmm. It's just like I, I found the. I am happy to take the lead when people need me to take the lead. When there's somebody who can take the lead, I find that quite attractive because mm -hmm. I am forthcoming. I'm a right. little bit in people's face. Like I'm keeping my voice down and trying to be super polite. And But when I'm uh, and, and accommodating to you, but when I'm in my uh, element, I'm just kind of like um, I'm a little hardcore <laughs> a little bit. Well, obviously, I <laughs> I read the book. I know. <laughs> So um, most men find me intimidating, and uh, it's easier with most men to take the lead and, and be the dominant and uh, get what I want from them than, uh, than to be in the submissive position. The reason I was submissive to Joshua was simply because uh, he was dominant to me. Right, right. Like it's kind of like dogs in the park, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of them will lay down. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Nicole? One of them yeah. will lay down and roll over. The other one will be like, "Okay, I guess we know who's boss." That's what happened. <laughs> right. But I went through a long usually... period. Mm -hmm. I went through a long period of I'm a very strong woman myself, uh, and I was trying to date men that I saw as like more stronger. I would say the word I would use is more powerful they seem to have more self-control than me and they seem to have things that I was missing but then I realized I just wasn't cut out for them they need someone that's like weaker than me so I've been recently trying to date men that are more sensitive and it's got honestly it's going a lot better like I'm enjoying it more mm -hmm. so I, I I have taken a shift where I've now become the alpha in the, most of my relationships it's it's fun right I mean in yeah. a way it's, it's <laughs> look at that smile yes it's fun <laughs> It's I, I, yeah i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying it a lot i'm enjoying it a lot also because it, it's a new transition for me because i spent so long always wanting like someone stronger than me that it's but i'm also i'm in my 30s and like i just am at the point where i'm who i am and i'm not going to become soft or sensitive at this age i'm only going to get harder technically <laughs> uh so i'm ready to take the reins in the relationship if i have to yeah, usually it's the men getting harder, right? <laughs> uh, that's that, that's the idea. And I know some doms that actually will sub for a night mm -hmm. so they can know what it's like. So do you think that being a sub for so many years made you a better dom? I believe that being, yes, absolutely. But I also believe that 
you know, just being in a very intense exchange for these many years made me a, a better dog. But mm -hmm. I am no longer a slave, but I'm definitely still a mentee. Like, right. Uh, you're, I'm, you're, still, you're... I'm still, you know, taking lessons here. <laughs> right. So you would, you, would, you would classify yourself as a switch? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would. I mean, with a person who is dominant to me, Mm -hmm. I can be submissive. So far, it was only Master Joshua, and I don't really want it to be anybody else. So far, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, no, but but uh, <laughs> you want to go there? <laughs> you have no you, idea. You got, do I need to? Do I need to take out my weapons and go like? Oh, no, I'm bigger you, than yours. You got things? you got stuff that makes my little wussy we'll writing crop look like nothing but uh here but it, here's the, it's on zoom so your wussy we'll little writing crop actually does look like nothing it disappears every time you move it so. i know i know because i got the whole thing but yes yes yeah. so anyway but here's the here's here's uh where we where we end oh, I'm so, so scared yeah no 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 what, what i was gonna say and if i have this correct and correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. now you're doming your husband uh, or you're playing with your husband. Let's put it that way. You're playing with your husband. That is one of uh, Master Joshua's proudest achievements. Uh, yes, not. Um, well, where do you get that from? It's not. It's not in the book. I know it's not in the book. I, I did my research. I did my homework. Damn yeah, man! <laughs> you said you said that you said that on the show. You said that on the show. Cool. Yes. Uh, very good research. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, to an extent, we're not in a. Let me clarify that we're not in a dynamic. He's not. He's not your slave. He's not my slave. He's not my anything. He's my husband, um, and it's he does not even uh, really like it when uh, video sign language comes into the bedroom because he's sort of like uh, save that to your other people. Um, <laughs> It's not me. Uh, he, he, he's kind of aller allergic to it now because. But 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 he is, he is engaging in some play now. Yes, he is because uh, it, well, play is fun, you know, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of advantages to having uh, a uh, a former sex slave uh, who's been trained for five years to be a rape. So I'm like, I know what I'm doing now, and I know how to do it well, and I'm like. I, and he is happy to be in the position of like, um, how about, how about, I'm going to tell you what to do, and you do it, and you don't have to ask yourself, uh, am I doing the right thing, or how does this feel, or does she like it, or I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do, and exactly what you need to know, and you don't have to feel any self doubt at any step of the way. Just lay back, baby. <laughs> that's, I'm that's going to tell you what to do. <laughs> I'm going that, to. That's, that's, that's the that's the dynamic. You. That's the power dynamic. And he's enjoying that. It's on, yeah, but it's not, you know, if it's if we're talking, it's not twenty four seven anything. Oh, of course, just, no, 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 obviously. Just a uh, subtle little. It's thing see, get in the bedroom. See, I'm not a lifestyler, and that's the thing. I, uh, I to me, and it's just only me. Mm -hmm. It's the icing on the cake. It's mm -hmm. not the cake. I know some people. It's the whole cake. For me, I like a little, a little of this, but I like uh, the uh, other intimacies too. So mm -hmm. right now you're you're actually getting your icing and your cake. Uh yes, so I, you know, sometimes I do miss being a slave. Uh, right. it's, it, it came with a certain amount of like um a little bit like being a kid in a way. No offense to all the slaves, but I mean I didn't mean it like being childlike. I meant right. like being uh trusting mm -hmm. and having the world be a simple place because you only Look at your parent. <laughs> you just, you know, you just hold somebody's hand and follow. So that had a certain charm to it. You like, you like being told what to do and knowing that the person that's telling you knows what they're talking about, and you can follow them. You like. It's them not even you. that. It's not you even like that. Follow. What is it? It's it's more like um, I not questioning. It's not mm -hmm. about I know where you it's not about I know that you know where you're going because sometimes he didn't. Right. <laughs> right? And I knew right. that. Mm -hmm. But I was like it's, it's almost like a religion in a way. Mm -hmm. But it it's right. a religion. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like uh, you're my prophet. You're my uh you're the thing that You're my I, guru. I 
confirm to you. So if you're wrong, I'll be wrong with you and it will be okay. Mm -hmm. And, but, and, uh, master Joshua is, is still in your life. Yeah. We're, we're still, still we're, a friend, still a mentor, still everything except still everything except slave. And I can de demonstrate how that works. Like yesterday we, we met at his place with friends and we were talking and, uh, I, uh, I made a jab at him or, or, you know, started to talk about something that made him a little bit uncomfortable. And he was like, okay, that's the end of that topic. And I was like, I don't see no collar. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> as I was saying, <laughs> and, wow. we all laughed, <laughs> and we all laughed and I continued talking about the topic I wanted to talk about, but, you know, sensitive to him, like not stepping on his toes or anything. Right. Like I would respect any other human being, but like, you know right. what, you can't tell me what to say anymore. <laughs> and that that's felt really good. <laughs> no, I'm sure it did. So in conclusion, yes, you five years ago went on a journey to find yourself. You didn't even know you were finding yourself, but you went on a journey for an article and you are now in a place where you are satisfied in all sorts of ways. You've written an amazing book and you went from being uh, just a culture, editor, a culture writer for a conservative uh, newspaper to somebody that's established in the scene. You still have your loving husband. You still have your two wonderful children and you still have your kink. And I actually still have, you know, and you still have master Joshua. I have Joshua. I don't know how to call him, but that, he's not but your I master. Have <laughs> you have, uh, you have hot guy, Joshua, <laughs> you have your husband, you have your children, you have it all. And every, it's all out in the open and it's an amazing story. It's an amazing book. Thank and you. tell everybody how, how they can get that book. Uh, surviving Master Joshua, Google. It'll come up on all the all the relevant outlets. Don't Google Pick Karma your Sag because you're gonna get the you're gonna get the mother load. Surviving <laughs> Master Joshua, and you survive Master Joshua, and thrive. Yep, that's my uh, legacy. <laughs> and well, that well, that's your legacy. And Nicole, Karma has also started her own publishing arm. Oh, wow. Where you're publishing uh, sexually, um, I don't and want to say graphic, but, but yeah, I don't want to say sexually graphic material, but uh, sexually themed material independently because yeah. this is a book that's, it's it, it's hard to, you're not going to take this assignment and Schuster to, to publish. You got to, you got to do it yourself and you got to really be DIY with this. And other people have not maybe as fascinating a story, but just as uh, just as sexual a story as yours right and they and need publishing and you help exactly. publish them tell That's tell cool. tell nicole about your publishing arm well currently um the publishing arm is called carnaculturepublishing.com and that's the website and it is a um self-assisted publishing that is people come with the books that they want to publish and uh if they if i deem them good enough to publish Mm -hmm. I help them through the stages of self-publishing, as in they can use the name of the publication if they would rather not run themselves, and they can use the LLC uh, that mm -hmm. I created to publish from. Uh, but essentially, they keep all the profits. I don't, I don't, I don't need their rights. I don't need their profits because I know it's slim picking for for uh, small prints, small presses. So they keep their profits and mm -hmm. I help them to publish the book and it's a la carte services, basically. That's wonderful. Uh, go, go, to, go to carnalculture.com. Absolutely. Yeah, if you, if you uh, want to help, uh, if you want to get us, uh, get this book published, a story published. And I'll tell you, like I said, you are fascinating. You and are a you. fascinating woman. You have a fascinating story and anything else you would like to promote, please go ahead. Can I? Well, trust me, I, I did three commercials. You can do whatever you want. Go right ahead. So there's one new project that I'm working on and I'm, I'm super excited about. The, the, the publishing company is called carnaculturepublishing.com. I am working on carnaculturenyc.com, which mm -hmm. is a blog for um, 
to do with the kinky culture of NYC, um, it being uh, kink, fetish, somatic cultures, everything from the light lightest end where like, you know, how's it called? Sacred dance uh, parties and cuddle mm -hmm. parties to, mm -hmm. to swing parties and also stories from the lifestyle or articles about the lifestyle. And I want to invite everybody who is, um, who has a hand in this profession, who is, who is involved in this to send in articles. And uh, this blog is for people to publish themselves and promote themselves with their articles. Of course, they have to be well-written, uh, but I will edit them to make sure they are. And mm -hmm. so if you have anything, send it to colonelculture at gmail.com. That's colonelculture at gmail.com. And around September, this blog launches with full Wonderful. content. Wonderful. I can't wait to read it. Thank you. You're adorable. <laughs> oh, thank you, Karma. I know we got a little deeper than you were expecting, but I had a great time <laughs> listening to your story and having some gaps filled in, and I think you're fantastic. No, oh, same. Yes. And do you Nicole, say this all do you say all this stuff off there too? <laughs> what's that? Only only to uh, only to my guests wearing masks. Nicole, <laughs> speaking yes. of self-publishing, you have a poetry book out. I do. Oh. Uh, so you can find me at Nicole Six Books on Instagram and uh, Nicole H Six on Facebook, and then in my bio is a link to my new poetry book on Lulu. Can you repeat that? The audio came out. It's her book, Slow Burn. The poetry book is on Lulu. dot com. Awesome! Yeah. Congratulations. It's a big deal. Thank you. And she's actually making some money off it. Yeah. How, how do you <laughs> how <laughs> tell me <laughs> uh i have i was first published in 2012 and then i just built a fan base uh so it's just the built-in fan base that's how i have people uh, uh are genuine readers of my work and they just like it so this is my fourth book and people are still buying it so i'm happy about that wow. she, ha she has that's a loyal awesome. fan base of submissive men <laughs> that's how she does it <laughs> and and everybody I, yes well as you as you do too and yeah. i am goth comedian on all social media i had a great time everybody have a wonderfully creepy week bye bye, bye.